The brand was strong, at least that's what we thought. Back in the late 2010s, Jesus and Mero became one of the most iconic OGs of contemporary entertainment. A very long back. Uh, Taylor Swift. <laughs> often compared to the likes of Keel and Peel. However, their story took a different turn, and on the 18th of June 2022, they vanished, and they have not been spotted together since then, leaving the Bodega Hive who supported them through the highs and lows to reminisce on the good old days. Bodega boys got me through college, baby. This is a mirror I watch truthfully twice a week. For them to end this, for whatever reason, breaks my heart sincerely. This is a mirror end just like Kill and Peel did. But the difference between this scenario and theirs is that Kill and Peel were and are actually still friends. A lot of fingers were pointed at their manager for their fallouts and downfall, but he's far from the real reason that they broke up. Known for their funny personalities, Jesus and Mero were once earning a combine of $41,000 a year in their mind numbing jobs, to then become a twosome that was nearly impossible to forget. Accumulating over $368 million views and 1 million subscribers across their plethora of YouTube channels. However, as time went by, their subscriber count began to fall and their viewership dropped by 80% in just one year. How did Jesus and Mero went from award-winning duos to one of the biggest flops in late night entertainment? Jesus, whose real name is Daniel Baker, started working with computers at a very young age. As a child, his love for troubleshooting and repairing the family's computer earned him the nickname Jesus, which was later tweaked to Jesus. On the other hand, a young kid by the name of Joel Martinez nicknamed the Kid Meru discovered his comedic talents. Yet his hunger for televised comedy or admiration for stand-up comedians remained rather dormant. At this point, Meru found himself stepping into the shoes of a teaching assistant while Jesus channeled his platform pros into a platform dedicated to fostering black entrepreneurship. However, they felt a void in their life, which they both tried to fulfill independently but soon, the ordinary will meet the extraordinary as their journey took a thrilling twist. Interestingly, their rise to stardom was ignited through cleverly crafted tweets. Launch in December 2013 and running for nearly 50 episodes, the Jesus and Mero podcast gave uniquely hilarious duo a platform that was quickly embraced as the Tigo source for weekly commentary that only they could provide. Their chemistry was undeniable. They riffed off one another with ease in the way that only longtime friends and siblings can, except they were never actually friends. Due to their chemistry on screen, fans believed that Jesus and Mero were actually close friends which was far from the truth. Their friendship backstory was totally fabricated. Donny Quark, the man who brought the two together, was a complex editor at the time. Stated in a piece with The Ringer, Jesus and Mero weren't full-fledged friends, but from the very first recording, their chemistry was unkind. This was much due to their similarities, both being immigrant sons who grew up love in sports, rap in the Bronx in the 80s. As Donny said, they were two of the most consistently funny people I had ever read on Twitter. Not once did he ever mention that they knew each other on Twitter. And he merely put the pieces together by sending Jesus an email, which he already knew from a different platform, and then getting Mero's contact on Twitter. At the time, the only reason that they agreed to partner up was out of desperation. Mero was a junior assistant teacher, making 20k a year after taxes, and didn't have much of an option. As Jesus puts it, you were two regular dudes at regular jobs, basically. Like, doing this experiment, like, we're going to try this new sh**. Despite the notoriety they gained from working at Complex, they still lived in the hood and had to attend their regular jobs on a daily basis. Luckily, in December 2014, MTV made an announcement that marked a turning point in their careers as they were revealed as the new additions to the cast of Guy Code for their fifth season. This breakthrough opened up worlds of opportunities for the dynamic duos, propelled them to be featured on various MTV and MTV2 shows like Uncommon Sense and Joking Off. However, they exited before the end of year two of their contracts as their humor were being nurtured 
shattered at the network and denying the free reign that they once had at Complex. Meanwhile, the Bodega Hive was getting stronger and over at the newly launched Viceland, the execs were watching from afar and noticed the pair languishing on MTV2 and the exciting news was made to team them up for a show on Viceland and they hired a DMV fan to produce the show. Desus and Maru, a journey that spread nearly 50 episodes hosted by the dynamic comedic duos Helen from the Bronx. This platform became a two-go source for weekly commentary, marking a significant chapter in their journey. Their unique and engaging content quickly forged an online community of fans who congregated in their lively subreddits, fueling discussions within the Bodega Hive. However, being part of the Vice world made them felt invincible, and as time progressed, their strengths were becoming their weaknesses, as Jesus and Mero's attitude was a bit nonchalant towards their commentary against other people. As Mero said, I feel like if I can fade you, I can say whatever. And this is where they started to make enemies in the industry. He's like, yo, how you disrespect me when I came show mad love at your bar mitzvah, Drake? The prime example of this was the fall of 2017, that the duo got into an online feud with DJ Academics. I see like these decent Samaritan decent Samaritan Stop oh, acting oh, like that. Oh, no, no. You lie, now you lying to yourself. Damn. Cause you hear that every day yeah, to, be fair, say, to be fair he's influent with money so okay. you know what i'm saying yeah, the term just runs off yeah. bob Iger couldn't announce it you know what i'm saying yeah. like spike jones you know what i'm saying <laughs> maybe not just like, maybe you gotta level up your tax that coin star vocabulary daddy <laughs> During this time, DJ Academics showed a more vulnerable side of him, nearly breaking down crying while he was on stream. You know, I might be getting a little bit emotional, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. But this is facts. Um, I don't got time for these media things. Like, I don't got time for the games I play. I'm gonna tell y'all 100%. And I know a lot of media niggas be watching now. I've been making more money than y'all before y'all even signed to y'all companies. I've been doing it on my own. Don't. One thing that the duo failed to realize while they tried to beat little DJ academics, despite the fact they had escaped the traditional route of a 9 to 5, they were still employees. Another nonchalant moment was their comments towards DJ Envy's wife. And no DJ Envy. Right. And it, it was it was a situation. Well, you know the DJ, DJ Envy check though. What? what the I don't I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I just try to make it messy. I don't know. And when you insinuated that she was there for the check. Yes, she did. When you said she was there for the check. That's what you said exactly. I heard it. And so you I have feel the clip right now. Yeah, you all heard it. Let's hear the clip. Let's, let's hear the clip. Let's hear the clip. Let's hear the clip. Hold on, you. We got the clip on deck. Since 15. All right, let's hear the clip. Hold on, I'm talking. Since 15, before I had a dollar. Yeah, yeah, no, wait. I'm telling you. All right, that's what I'm But it's it's you. You dig your old grave. I've been doing it. It's your old grave every day. You dig your old grave. Like you can't. You just like you just don't leave well enough alone, bro. Despite making clear signs of progression in the industry, they began to cement their downfall. Heavily and carelessly criticizing other media personalities was no foundation to stand on, and it was just a matter of time before it all came crashing down. And this appeared to be the case when the duo left Vice and they embarked on a groundbreaking journey by becoming Showtime's inaugural late night talk show with a vision to define the norms. Transitioning from Viceland to Showtime came with a massive budget and loads of responsibilities from one episode weekly to four. However, it's remained untold how the journey switch from what everyone used to love. Initially, their dynamic and comedic style won the hearts of audiences seeking an escape from the mundane reality of life. Their show served as a haven for fans to unwind and enjoy conversations and funny perspectives between the two. After making its debut on the 21st of February 2019 with Congresswoman Alexandra Cortez as the inaugural guest, the duo met with some former presidents, legendary musicians and actors, and so the series continued to flourish after being renewed for a fourth season in August 2021. However, the pair encountered a situation that required more than just their signature humor. A program that was previously refuge for their day-to-day -day concerns on Vice changed into a forum for more serious and even political debates. At the beginning, they were happy with their partnership with Showtime. This is either gonna be something or it's gonna be nothing. Right. <laughs> That's pretty much what we went out there to prove, so yes. And it turned out to be both. Nice. Is this where you want to be, Showtime? Hell yeah. yeah Every hell day yeah. I wake up and think. Hell yeah. 
much I've yeah. been at so far. Mm-hmm. Like they respect our creativity mm-hmm. and they give us a lot. Of time. Although coming for many shows, this progression presented a problem for Jesus and Mero's devoted fan base. As time progressed, the realms of possibilities for their humor was once again being nurtured, and they had a hard time keeping their primary audiences happy. For one, they were on Showtime, and their core audiences had to pay a monthly subscription, and majority of their audiences were not too keen on this idea, and even called them sellouts. As fans, the quick fix they gained from the duo's best moments on Viceland was no longer readily available. Secondly, it became less of a conversation and more of an interview, something Jesus was strongly for, while Mero advocated for a more nuanced and tried to add more unpredictable elements which their audience loved. But Jesus was always worried and annoyed of the unpredictability of Mero. So they were forced to strike a balance between the requirements of their development platform and the demands of the devoted fans. As a result, when clips of the show made its way onto YouTube, there was less interest by the fans. They saw a downfall in views and disgruntled fans unsubscribing to the network. In efforts to prevent the ultimate downfall and fallout of what he had built so far, Jesus and Mero manager wanted to have a more hands on approach on what was happening on the show. However, his input was not welcomed by Showtime execs and producers. And eventually, Showtime asked Lopez to step away from the show, as he was caught many times in some compromising positions, including bullying and making people on the show feel awful. In the swirling currents of July 2022, there were circulating rumors of uncertainty around the relationship between Jesus and Meru, casting a shadow over the future of their beloved Badega boys. Tension arose when Jesus and Meru clashed over their manager who was sidelined by Showtime. Showtime's decision to distance Lopez from tapings and meetings was backed by Jesus, but for Meru, bound by loyalty from their years of collaboration, he stood by Lopez. At one point, their clash cast a frosty shadow on set. Despite attempts to reconcile, the heat persisted, forcing Jesus and Mero to make the heart-wrenching decision to dissolve their thriving partnership. In a heartfelt plea, Jesus reached out to the loyal Bodega Hive on Twitter in June, assuring them of his return. Bodega Hive, you think I abandoned y'all, but the art is coming back. Please believe in me. I love y'all. Despite his message, nothing changed between the two, and as time passed by, the space between them began to grow even bigger, a rift that both the show crew and devoted fans could not ignore. At this point, the signs were clear. The duo had to put a stop to their show in November. This was followed by a series of independent appearances and media and public events, and only a few days later, Showtime made it official on their Twitter account, announcing that the two had officially parted with with Showtime, marking the end of an era after 200 episodes. But this did not go without criticism, mainly on the part of Victor Lopez and Meru. One person replied on a subreddit post calling Victor Lopez the supervillain, while others claim the whole situation was a result of misplaced loyalty. However, while most fans were picking sides, a number of people felt disappointed by the new development. Following a year of inactivity on Jesus and Meru, with their last video uploaded July of last year, the child has since faced a downward spiral of views and subscriber count, rightfully so. But beyond the lingering echoes of conflicts, do you think they still have a chance to come back together and be stronger? Will the Bodega Hive be waiting for them? And let me know what you think in the comment section. We'd love to know your thoughts. It's your boy CJ from YouTube. See you on the next one. Beow.